Hello there people, this is Bruce Be Cool or Nintendo Bruce, and this is another Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Decade Jewels gameplay with my smooth smooth voice as commentary for a ranked match with a random opponent. So, going into it, fairly excited as I've got a new deck to try out finally. Um, still haven't got all the cards for it yet, but hey oh. And uh, you can probably see straight away there's this koala there, so this is a type of burn deck. And some of you are probably thinking, oh, boo, burn deck, oh, get a proper deck, like, uh, where's your dark armed dragon, uh. But, you know, all I've got to say is whatever. At the end of the day, if burn decks weren't meant to be made, then, you know, these cards wouldn't have been made. I mean, come on, how can you resist the call of the koala bear? Jeez. Which, speaking of which, someone resisted. They uh, decide to use Soul Exchange, and there's me thinking, oh, straight off the bat, this is a monarch deck, isn't it? My field is just going to get wrecked. And uh, lo and behold, so it was. So Sias, you know, got rid of my Koala from the Soul Exchange. And my Gravity Bind, my, one of my main stalling cards, gone. Just like that. Luckily you can't attack. But already I'm screwing to myself thinking, Jeez, what, why, why a Monarch deck? Why, why has this got to get rid of my cards already? But Ao, you know, the show must go on. You know, I ain't gonna rage quit, never have done, never will, so let's continue. So, set my Mystic Tomato just in case he doesn't have another Monarch in his hand, and if he goes for the attack, then I've still got something on the field at least. And uh, here's where the deck sorta of shines. You can see my Nurse here and Soul Taker. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Nurse uh, actually reflects um, gaining damage into uh, actual damage. So if you've ever played Bad Reaction to Smoochie, then it's like that but in a monster card and far more accessible, which is why I don't play Bad Reaction to Smoochie. So anyway, here you saw that he didn't attack, which I'm thinking, what, really? Well, why wouldn't you? There's only one monster on the field, no back row. You know, be aggressive if you're going to play Monarchs. So uh, I take the opportunity to play the Nurse, play Soul Taker, which usually destroys an opponent's monster and gives them a thousand life points, but thanks to the Nurse it reverses that. And uh, I figure, okay, let's try and, you know, spring some of his trap cards. But nope, he lets me attack his lovely little marshmallow. And uh, obviously, you know, a thousand damage to me. Boo hoo. Uh, but I think, you know, I'm not going to leave that there. Even if this is a burn deck I'm playing, marshmallow is going to be fodder for a monarch. So get rid of it. Just get it the hell out of there. And so, you know, my hand is nearly depleted. Got a morphing jar, luckily. And for those of you that do play Burners know, you know, it's literally like when you're playing with a Burn deck, you know, you're going to burn through it quicker than just setting a, your real deck on fire, essentially. So, you know, you must have a Morphin Jar, you have to. So anyway, he's thinking along, set something, I think, oh, awesome, you know, my nurse stays on for one more turn, you know, do I get a gift card or anything like that? And though, uh, for those of you that haven't heard of it, Gift Card is an actual Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, usually gives the opponent 3,000 life points. But uh, as you can tell, there's going to be a nasty surprise if I do get that card in this match. So, another staller there. I'm thinking, no, no, no. Matt, I don't have anything to get rid of it. He's probably got a Monarch in his hand. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? So, uh, yeah, he sits there and thinks for a little bit. Well say a little bit, obviously quite a bit of time there, and uh, yep, plays the breaker, which I thought was quite odd for a Monarch deck anyway, but whatever, in the day I've got two channel cards, it's just a question of whether I want to use both of them at once to, uh, to deal 2000 damage, or should I keep an air of mystery and only play one, and you know what, that's what I did, I only played one chain strike, the one that obviously he targeted, uh, and that way he doesn't know what I've got face down there, so you know, now he decides to finally attack, so it gets rid of the nurse, fair play, I would have done the same, uh, and that's a bit of a shame there, as obviously you've only got three uh, nurses in the deck. So, what do I draw now? Secret barrel, set that straight down and uh, let the fun and games begin with Morphing Jar. So, discard his hand, I'm you know, quite happy with that, and the Solemn Judgment got rid of there. Now instantly you've got to think, okay, why was a Solemn Judgment not set? But I couldn't figure it out at that, this point in time. So, uh, I'm getting quite excited that I've got a Lava Column in my hand there. But I figure I have to get rid of my Morphing Jar 1. So, 
straight into suicide mode, attack breaker. For those on the receiving end there, they obviously wouldn't want to reverse the damage there or anything, but you know, it's a weak card, why would you want to get rid of it? So, uh, yep, now the Lava Golem comes, you know, the air of mystery continues, and hopefully this should be delivering a thousand damage each turn. Although, now he starts thinking. So I'm like, okay, is something going to spring? Does he have a bottomless trap hole? Solemn judgment? What, what does he have going on? He's thinking, uh, he really is taking his time here as well. Which, by the way, you know, I'm not sure if it's just me, but a lot of people take their time on these matches when, you know, the decision is fairly obvious. I find that quite frustrating, but hey -o. So anyway, it was a bottomless trap hole. Got rid of the Lava Golem, you know, fair enough. And, uh, yeah, so he draws. I figure let's play a Secret Barrel. So then, if he does have a Heavy Storm from this draw, I can play Secret Barrel and uh, Chain Strike. But he plays Mystical Space Typhoon and goes for the Secret Barrel. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Uh, and it actually almost forced my hand. I almost played another card just because I couldn't believe it. Like, no, he can't have just played it against my Secret Barrel. Surely he knows it doesn't negate it. But, alas, you know, that's it. And then he played Heavy Storm on top of that. It's like, okay, right. So, chain up with Secret Barrel. Chain the Chain Strike. So, 1200 damage there as well. So I think that's two lots of 1200. 2400. Beautiful. So, with all things going well, I've got a Wave Motion. Uh, well, no, sorry, I don't have a Wave Motion. Um, but hopefully, I can pick something up with my Nurse on the next draw. Although, I do hate relying on top decking. So anyway, he thinks, again, obviously five cards in his hand, you know, possibilities are endless, what's he going to do? You know, again, one monster on the field, nothing to negate. So what's he do? He uh, goes ahead and sets a card, uh, the spell and trap card zone, I believe. <sighs> there we go. Okay. And that's it. No monster. So I thought, brilliant. And then I draw a ceasefire. I think, ooh, ooh, this could be it. For some odd reason, I decide to go into my battle phase. I figure I'm not going to trigger any torrential tribute. Uh, let's just set the summon a monk. And this way, that's a thousand damage there. If he summons a monster, then he's dead, unless it's solemn judgment. Uh, or if he lets me have my turn, then he's dead again, if, as long as he doesn't have a solemn judgment. But then again, make it my turn, negate my summon. And, uh, well, it's game regardless. So, yep, makes it my turn. So I summon, try to go down a Solemn Judgment. There's nothing there, so ceasefire it is. And that's round one done. Now, even though I won that, and something you guys should take home from this as well, is even when winning a round, if you know a guy's playing a certain theme and you've got something in your side deck against that, then do it. So here I've whacked in Torrential Tribute and Crush Card Virus. Um, obviously Torrential Tribute, you know, blows away the uh, the field and Crush Card gets rid of the Monarch in the hand and on the field as well. So why not? Why not? And I think to myself, okay, I've got to get rid of some of the continuous cards because in the day Monarchs get rid of continuous ones. But I can't change to that. So yeah, got rid of a Wave Motion and I'm really, you know, picking apart my deck here, thinking. What should I get rid of? I like everything about it. And I thought, you know what, Gravity Bind, you didn't serve me well last game, so off you drop. And the next round begins. But first, for some light entertainment, his choice, he goes second. I'm like, really? Wow. Either he really wants to, you know, play the soul exchanges, or have something to just clear my field and go for an all-out attack at the beginning of the turn, or there's something else there, so, you know, a little confused there, a little confused. But instantly, Crush Card Virus hits, got my Mystic Tomato, so I figure, okay, just gotta let him attack, get the Sangan, use it for Crush Card, and then grab something with the Sangan. What could possibly go wrong? So he's thinking in his standby phase here, so obviously you can tell he's got a quick play spell card, which, by the way, you, sh you guys should always try and guess what your opponent is playing. Uh, end of the day, if you're setting cards and your opponent is constantly thinking as you do that, then you know he's got something 
you know, chainable as opposed to Sakuritsu armor or Mirror Force or anything like that. So, you know, do try and guess what the opponent's playing. It will help you, I promise. So, straight out with the Krebons there on the emergency teleport. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, oh, goody, he's going to tune, he's going to tune. I'm going to do a magic cylinder, you know, take a load of uh, health off him. But no, he just summons uh, Gale the Whirlwind. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? You know, you wouldn't use that for emergency teleport. Oh, no, perhaps, he, perhaps he's got something else up his sleeve, you know. So I didn't really want the Gale attacking and, uh, you know, having either a Sangan that's going to get destroyed so I can't use Crush Card or have mis another Mystic Tomato out so Krebons can't destroy it. So I negate the attack of the Gale, have Krebons destroy it and bring out the Sangan. You know, smart move, smart move, even if I do say so myself. So obviously, quite a scary field as well, you know, he's set two cards in the back there. And uh, yeah, so he thinks, ends the phase and Krebons is out of there. It's like, what's the point of that? Wow, you know? So, let's goad him with a wave motion if he's got anything to stop it. Again, what I was saying earlier on, he's thinking there, so he's either got a quick play, like MST or whatever, but he didn't play it. So it's probably not something so simple, maybe a Solemn Judgment, or perhaps something completely different, but at this point I'm thinking Solemn Judgment. So, you know, as, as you can see, I've pretty much laid my entire hand. Rule of thumb usually is you don't do that, but all of my things are chainable. I've got Chain Strike, Crush Card Virus, Ceasefire, and Swords was going for broke, really, just in case he did find a way to, uh, you know, attack and, you know, pummel me, basically. Uh, which would have happened, really, if I uh, just left Tangan there. So yeah, sets a card. Gale's still there, sitting in the f uh, staring me in the face. I'm just waiting for him to summon something so I can use Ceasefire first, really. 1500 damage. But uh, no, he constantly thinks. And boy, is it annoying. So yeah, Psychic Commander there. Yet another tuner, probably a bad hand he started off with or something. But, uh, yeah, you know, let, let's go for the ceasefire. Don't know why I didn't play it straight away, but whatever. So, yeah, 1500 damage. Still thinking there. And again, I'm leaning more towards Solemn Judgment here. But obviously, if he did have Solemn Judgment, he's not going to play it, because in the day, 1500 damage versus paying 3350, you know, you're going to take the damage, aren't you? You're going to. And he just ends his turn. So, you know, I'm thinking, beautiful, Sangan's still there. My turn, let's play the Crush card. You know, let's see what he's got going on, and I'll get the effects of Sangan as well. Which, by the way, if you do have the opportunity, try and play Crush Card Virus in your turn. Uh, not the end of your opponent's turn or the beginning of theirs, although the beginning is the second best opportunity. Um, because essentially you're giving them an extra crush card turn if it's played in your go. But he does solemn it, so I read that right. And I thought, oh, 2600 damage. And he's got something to counter again, so he probably has another solemn face down. So Sangan goes off, I think, you know what? As long as I go for my nurse, I might as well play the chain strike and let everything fall into place. So 800 damage there. Again, he thinks, obviously because there's probably a solemn judgment face down. But uh, it does take a little while to think, so perhaps it is something else, maybe not. But it is. It's like, wow. Okay, you know, you're going to negate my 800 damage to deal with yourself 1300. Either you've lost the will to live, or something's gone a bit missing up top. So, you know, grab the nurse. Nothing can go wrong, even if he has a, a way to summon judgment net. Upstart goblin, 1000 damage. Soul taker, just perfect. And I had my wave motion just in case. And that concludes the duels. So, you know, if you guys have any comments or questions about the deck I'm playing, or what I was feeling there then you know great post them and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can uh, and by all means if you like the video then give it a good old thumbs up but uh, yeah you guys take care and as always I'll see you again soon